100. And Casey Kane with the comeback of the day, fifth today, Marty. Yes, nice recovery for Casey Kane, and it was a lot of work, wasn't it, Casey? You guys had to put in, what did you tell me, an hour and a half worth of work to get the car back to the top five? Yeah, it was tough early. I was just kind of floating on entry and back in the pack. I was floating all over the place, so it was out of control. The guys did a good job at Farmers Insurance Chevy, uh, thanks to you know Bleacher Report and Great Clips and uh, Time Warner Cable, Pepsi Max. But yeah, it's summer for a while. We got it, and then we were on a good strategy there at the end. I feel like we were pretty competitive with uh, the guys in front of us. You think a run like this can silence some of the critics, Casey? Uh, probably not all of them. I've uh, and they probably don't all need to be silenced after one one good run. We just we were uh, pretty just have ran way too bad the first uh, 14, 15 races, and um, hopefully this will get us going and we can get strong from here, make some points up, get away, and get in the chase. But uh, that's all we can really shoot for at this point. Nice top five for Casey Kane, and next week that's the Sonoma where he's won before, Ralph. Here with Brad Keselowski, uh, get a word with Brad about how your day went out there, gave it all you had. I know that trying to drive the wheels off the thing. Went for some interesting fuel strategy, tire strategy. What was where to come off? Yeah, I think everybody tried some strategy at the end. Uh, the four and the, the twenty-four looked really strong. I think they were the cars to beat there, and uh, uh, it was just a matter of what strategy was going to play out with the way the yellows fell. But uh, you know, we were probably a, a third to fifth place car either way, with strategy or without strategy. And I think either way, we we're going to finish third to fifth. So uh, just need a little bit more out of the Miller Lite Ford Fusion to, to run with them. Uh, uh, them big fucking big motor cars, we were way behind them. But uh, we just gotta keep digging. I know uh, Rosh Yates and the gang is working hard on uh, the engine front. And we got really good uh, cars here at Team Pets right now. They're fast. Uh, these high straightaway speed places, we need a little bit more to, to keep up with these guys. But uh, everywhere else, I feel like we're right there. So uh, it made even a little bit better. So proud of our effort and uh, we'll just keep digging. And uh, got a lot of consistency right now. Just. Third, second, and second. Just wish it was, uh, you know, three first place finishes. But uh, still very proud of our team and our effort. Adam, if you're going to be up front, Ralph, you got to warn you. Yeah, we had a, a really solid Pittsburgh paint in our Chevy all weekend uh, from the time that I loaded. Uh, I obviously got to uh, uh, be in victory lane yesterday with my daughter. My dad was here today, so it's a good Father's Day weekend for sure. Um, yeah, the car, like I said, has been fast all weekend. We needed some clean air at the end, and uh, my guys got me up front on some uh, pit strategy and, and good pit stops, and um, uh, came home with the top five, so uh, pretty pretty good. How bad, and you gave Slugger a nice birthday present, didn't you? Yeah, it's his birthday. He's uh, he's like 55. Ah, he's not that old. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, his birthday, Father's Day weekend, and uh, that's the family here to share with. Impressive. Fourth place finish for Paul Menard. Second top five for RCR this year, Adam. And both of them. For that 27 machine, as Paul said, great weekend for him. We look at our final results of round 15. Yeah, good, good recovery by Casey. We heard from him. Dale Earnhardt Jr., solid run for him. Uh, Tony Stewart worked his way back to 11th, and uh, probably passed four cars today. The needy driver out there. Yeah, like I said, it was just hard to keep up with, with strategies because these guys were all over. Some of these guys were up front leading at one time. It, it was just a roll of the dice on what you were going to do there that last pit stop to try to get that back position. So there, Kyle Larson ended up in the eighth position. Kurt Busch, 13th, the week after he finished third at Pocono. And, you know, Matt Kenson fought all weekend long yeah. and ends up inside the top 15. And Justin Allgaier and Great. Danica were two solid runs for those guys, uh, for those two cars. I mean, they at, at one time, they got a lap down, got the lucky dog. She got back in, in the deal and made the most of it. And that's the deal. When you get that lucky dog, make the most of it. And that's a career best for Justin Allgaier today. That team really going in the right direction. Montoya, top 10 in his NASCAR return. He'll also be in Indianapolis and Austin Dillon back in the Yeah, I was just going to say, Dillon had a good run going, you know, all day. And then ran into that, oh, I guess it was tire or whatever issue. They were under there with a the hammer uh, late in the race. Some pretty big names on our final page. Among them, Kyle Busch, who spent a number of laps in the garage. And Brian Vickers started 10th. And he crashed on lap one. Jeff Gordon came home six today. Chris Neville caught up with him moments ago. Uh, Jeff Gordon said the car was exceptional on Friday. Jeff, he came home six. Was dirty air just tough? Yeah, the car is still exceptional. I mean, in my opinion, that driver didn't hang her Chevrolet belongs in Victor Lane. But, you know, we, uh, we, do, we lost some track position. And when we lost track position, we knew it was going to handle good. But we were just super loosey when we got clean air. So that, that probably hurt us more than anything. We just never could move forward 
And then there at the end, you know, we uh, came in, took two tires, and boom, the thing was gone and flying again. So, um, yeah, six, not uh, not really indicative of the race car or what I felt like we were capable of, but we'll certainly take it. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Kyle, how much of an advantage was it losing that rear bumper? Or was that just you up on the wheel driving your tail off? I'm sure it was a somewhat of an advantage uh, from what my crew members said. Um, I've never had that happen before. Um, I think even if we had our rear bumper, we probably still would have had a good target Chevy today and um, just made one too many mistakes. You know, I spun off two there and feel really bad for ever got collected in that. Um, I know Seppi was racing hard all day, so I'm sure I ruined his day, but um, you know, I hate it for him. But yeah, we, you know, we got in the top five, fought hard to get in the top five, and then uh, I sped on pit road with you know, less than 50 laps ago and had to work hard from there again. So um, we got back to eighth, which is a good finish, but probably would have finished a little bit better. But um, you know, can't can't say enough about this Target team uh, and everybody at Target too for letting me come out here uh, and race in Sprint Cup Series. I'm having a blast so far. And um, you know, Shine Shine did a great job. You know, calling shots on pit road. I just didn't execute driving me on pit road. Dude. Well, Joey Legat, I have engine problems and a 40th place finish. Thanks, Joey. Next up, the road course at Sonoma. That will be a wild card, and when we get there, the chase grid will look like this. 15 races complete, still only 10 different winners, and Jimmy Johnson sits atop the number one seat as of now after getting his third victory here today. First driver in that has not won, Matt Kenseth, fourth overall in the championship. Right behind him, Kyle Larson, who is now eighth overall in points. And Paul Menard, who was on the outside looking in after disappointment last week at Pocono, has jumped up on the board, as has Clint Boyer. Today, though, all about Jimmy Johnson. He's never done this before. Celebrate victory at Michigan, and he's doing it on Father's Day, which is perfect. See you from Wine Country next weekend. Count down the green on at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Jimmy Johnson will be pulling for his fourth win in five weeks. And yes, he does have a victory on his resume in Wine Country. A look back now at the 400 miles from Michigan. Things got interesting early. Lap one, Brian Vickers goes wide into the wall after starting 10th his day. Pretty much done before it even started. Clipped by Travis Quaffle. Quaffle ended up 43rd, never got back out. Vickers was 42nd in the final rundown. Then just a few laps later, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. went wide. You see Kyle Larson spinning. Casey Kane went around. Damage for Martin Truex Jr. Kane would rally back to finish in the top five here. Kyle Larson, who was eighth today. Good battle up front early between Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick. They had the top two cars combining to lead more than 100 laps. Joey Logano got some time at the front. Here getting around Jimmy Johnson on a restart. Not a good afternoon for Kyle Busch. They had problems here getting out of the way when everyone else sailed by. They took his car to the garage on multiple occasions. Kyle ended up 41st. Now you see, no rear bumper for Kyle Larson. Everyone said it was an advantage, and yes, that 42 car was fast. He led laps for the second consecutive week, despite the fact he was caught speeding on pit road and had that accident earlier. Jamie McMurray got the lead on some strategy, but couldn't handle it on a restart when Jimmy Johnson pulled away. And at the checkered flag, it was Jimmy Johnson who was the strongest of them all after four hundred miles here at Michigan. Well, we talked about it right off the top of Countdown to Green, guys. Hendrick Motorsports in a great place. And once again, they were flexing their muscles today. Sixth win of the season for Mr. H. We'll step aside. Our post-race coverage continues after this on TNT. consecutive races. It's the third time they've done that. The most they've ever won six in a row in 2007. And the way they're running right now, I would say they will be a threat next weekend when we go out to Sonoma. 
I would definitely agree with you on that. <laughs> Yeah, that goes out on the limit. Yeah, that was way out of the right. So yeah, you guys, you maybe we have picks off the top. I thought I would, you know, go out on the on the backside. Again, just as we said in Countdown to Green, when you look at the caliber of drivers they have uh, and the caliber of equipment and stuff, they are a threat every week. They're the guys that everyone else measures themselves. So when you say, and when you say the Hendrick team, it's a big team. It's a big team. You threw Stuart, Stuart Haas in there as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, it, those guys are extremely strong right now. Well, and, and not just Stuart. Haas, because now you got to start looking at the Ganassi guys, who yes. have been really, really good. Right. Special thanks to our producer, Jeff Randolph. Our director is Mike Wells, and our coordinating producer, Barry Landis. Next Sunday, NASCAR on TNT heads to Sonoma. Coverage begins 2 p.m. Eastern time with Countdown to Green, served by side, followed by the Toyota Sabart 350. And TNT is gearing up for an epic summer with the premiere of one of television's most talked about new shows. From Michael Bay, stay tuned for an exclusive sneak peek of TNT's new series, The Last Ship. That is next. For all of our pit reporters working hard today on Father's Day, with Larry McReynolds, Kyle Petty, and Wally Dollenbach, I'm Adam Alexander. Congratulations to Jimmy Johnson. He's a winner in the Irish Hills of Michigan.